everyone, it's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. Thank you so much for coming to my video today. We're gonna take a look at part of my plastic jewelry collection. I think I'm gonna have to put this video in two different parts because I have a whole bunch of it. I love wearing plastic jewelry. It's very light, it's very comfortable. I also like collecting it. Everything I'm showing you right here is Bakelite, but I just wanna mention that I did one time, not too long ago, find a Bakelite bracelet that I sold on eBay for, um, I'm gonna put it on the screen. I think it was $2,600 or $2,400 or something like that. Obviously a very, very rare piece of Bakelite that didn't change color. A lot of times Bakelite, especially the whites and the purples change over time to different colors and the purple turns brown and so on. So mine was sort of a pristine example. As always, please let me know below what your favorite piece or pieces are. Subscribe to the channel if you want, like the video if you do, and we will get started right now. Thanks again for coming everybody. So here's some of my Bakelite. We'll start out with the bangles, I guess. I believe these are all Bakelite. I do have more than this. Um, hold on, let me just try to organize these out. So of course, bake, Bakelite was um, invented by Leo Bakeland in the early 1900s. It had a lot of great uses. It was used for a lot of things because it didn't conduct heat. Now there were some environmental concerns, I think, with manufacturing it. And you know, as time goes on, newer, better things come about. I really like these muted colors. Some of the, uh, some of the brighter pieces are actually Catalan. And these are somewhat easy to find because people in thrift stores and yard sales think they're plastic. That's what they look like to them. We're gonna test a couple of these with Simichrome polish just so we can have a look at how that works out, <laughs> how it looks. But if you're in the wild, a lot of people can briskly uh, rub it with their thumb and then smell their thumb if you get a formaldehyde smell. It's Bakelite. One thing that would be a cool thing to do is some of these bangles, I mean, they don't really sell for that much on eBay. So if you can afford it, maybe buy one just so that you have it to make the comparison so you can find out you know, exactly what that smell is. Some people rub it on their jeans. Also, if you put Bakelite under very, very hot tap water, it, you'll also get that same smell. And that's how we can tell things are Bakelite. The other way, of course, is with Simichrome polish, which we're gonna do right now. Here's Simichrome polish. It is not expensive. I get this on Amazon. I don't know how much it is. It's like seven or eight dollars or so. I usually use cotton swabs, but today I just have a little bit of a paper towel. So let's just spot check one of these. I think these are all Bakelite. I'm pretty sure they are, but um, I, I, I could be wrong, but I did have them separated as such. So I'll just put a little bit right on the piece. And um, what other one can we do? So I guess we'll try this one too. Just put a little bit on there. Oops, it's probably too much. All right, so now let's just see what kind of result we'll get. It will look like a yellow stain if it's real Bakelite. If it isn't, this one doesn't look like Bakelite all of a sudden to me. I don't know why. <laughs> um, well, let's find out. If it isn't real, it will um, just stay pink, just like the Simichrome is. Simichrome is. So let's see if this is yellow. Yeah, it certainly is. Okay. Yeah, I thought I had tested these all before. Okay, good. So let's try our other our other thing. Um, what did I do? Okay, this one, yeah. So it's always a good idea to just sort of um, wipe out or wipe off your bracelets or your any, any piece of jewelry that you're testing because sometimes they just have dirt on them, that's all. And then maybe it could look like yellowish and it's not really that, it's just like 
somebody was a smoker or something. The same with putting it under hot water and giving it the smell test. Sometimes there's perfume. So, wow, I can really smell that because of the friction I just made. Um, now, why don't we just for science sake um, test a bangle that is not real and we'll do the simichrome polish test so you can see the difference. And we're gonna use this bracelet right here to do our test. Let me just move these out of the way. There's so many different types of plastic. I mean, it's it's crazy. There's tons and tons and tons of different types. So when it comes to jewelry though, I don't really care about any of that. What I do care about is if it's celluloid, if it's Bakelite, or if it's Lucite. Now, uh, the Lucite is often a misnomer, which I know. Uh, Lucite was actually developed by the DuPont company. It's a very, very specific thing. So well, I say Lucite, but I never know if it if it is actually Lucite. Like this bangle, I will just call it Lucite. I know, it's probably not the proper name. Okay, so that has a lot of dirt on it, <laughs> like I just said. So hold on, let me just clean the dirt off, <laughs> and then we'll try again. It, it's not really yellow anyway. It's sort of like just dirt. All right, now I, I think I cleaned it up a little bit. Let's do this again. Bakelite, one of the first synthetic plastics. It really had its heyday in the 20s and the 30s, and it is made out of phenol and formaldehyde. Yeah, there it is, just pink. Well, it's still dirty, <laughs> but you get the idea. Big difference between just the Pepto-Bismol pink color and this, night and day, right? All right, let's continue on looking at some of my Bakelite. A lot of people who collect Bakelite like the carved Bakelite in particular, like this. Um, so let me just put these to the side and we'll have a look at a few other pieces. This is Bakelite also. So I love this so much. I actually had this kind of on my wish list in my mind and I found it at a yard sale. This was a dollar. I almost dropped to the ground <laughs> when I saw it and I picked it up and she said, jewelry is a dollar. This is amazing. Obviously uh, straight out of the 1940s, I actually really like fruit jewelry too. Now there is some problems. Uh, there are some problems here on the stems. You can see that's very, very common for these. I think that's just paint or something. But look at those cherries. I love this. I mean, I love this so much. I want to marry it. That's how much I love this, this necklace. I think it's outstanding. And then it had a friend. Look, what? Get out of here. Look at this pin. Look at that movement. Oh, baby. I love this set. I know it sells for a bunch, but I, I'm not going to sell it. Absolutely not going to sell it. I've actually worn this. I haven't worn the necklace yet, but I have worn this brooch. Fab, right? I love this. Here's a very, very pretty dress clip. Isn't that nice? I love that color. And I think these are Bakelite too. I mean, they must be because I had them all in my Bakelite bag, but they could have been mixed up, but I believe these are also Bakelite. And these are very interesting, I think, these bingo ones. Aren't those neat? These are really cool old earrings. I love those. And then this, check this out. That's so great. A lot of times Bakelite is named after food, which I think is really, really fun. So this is um, apple juice, I think, is what this is referred to. And this is like a belt, a belt buckle thing. Oops, it doesn't go like that. Look at that, isn't that an awesome deco? deco design too love that and i have some other clip earrings here aren't these pretty i think these are called butterscotch bakelite right is this spinach or something it's really cute so that's just something that the collectors have come up with through the years here's a little piece of carved carved bakelite 
I know some people call it Bakelite. I think they're both actually acceptable, Bakelite or Bakelite. And this one is actually Bakelite, believe it or not. It's super cool. And I really like the marbleization on this one. Let's just test it real quick. I know some people really like to watch the testing, so we'll just do it real, real fast. And if I didn't mention it, which I probably did, I got all these items in thrift stores and um, yard sales, you know. I don't think I paid up for anything here. Well, I put too much. Let me just take a little bit off. I think everything here was just, you know, a couple of dollars. But I live in the Northeast, and it's a really great part of the country to get vintage stuff. And I've been collecting for years, you know, and by years, I kind of mean decades. So it's not like I just found all this stuff in a month, you know. Um, but let's take a look at this nice stain here that we're going to get. Oops. Be careful not break, <laughs> not break this. Anyway, there's the yellow. Isn't this nice? So those are some of my Bakelite pieces. I think I might have more, but... Um, yeah, maybe we will just move on to some general plastics next. Let's take a look at some bangle bracelets now. These are not Bakelite, but some of these are very vintage anyhow. And I love that. I really love this pink one. This one is one of my favorites. I've never seen anything like it. How cool is this thing? I love that. Boy, I sure wish that was Bakelite. That'd be worth a fortune, <laughs> but it isn't. So this is what I call Lucite when it's clear plastic. Is it actually the name brand Lucite with a capital L that was developed by DuPont? I don't know, but I really like that one. Just clear. And I have some glittery ones. Oh, these are weird because they're like curved. I wonder if they're supposed to be that way or if they um, like got exposed to heat or something. There are two types of plastic that's used in jewelry. One is like thermoset, and then the other one is thermoplastic. I don't really care about that. <laughs> uh, but if you do, of course, take a look at that on uh, Wikipedia or whatever. This is weird. I never really kind of could figure out what this is. It's like a, a snake head or something, but it's really big. I think this might be, sorry, I'll pull the camera back a little bit. I think this might be one of those ones that you wear in your upper arm. Um, but look at that. It's kind of cool, right? I don't think it's wood. I think it's plastic. Anyway, that's just sort of a, a mysterious thing. But I love all my, all of my plastic bangles. I just noticed this was in my box of plastic bangles, but this is ivory, not plastic. So um, I'll just uh, take that out of there. Here's an oldie, but goodie. I love this brooch. First of all, I love brooches, in case you didn't know that. So these leaves right here are, are celluloid. And through all these years, they didn't break, if you can believe it, right? This is just beautiful. I wonder if that's plastic or if that's, that's not amber, is it? Hmm. I never really thought about it before. Let me see. Yep, that is amber, all right. I just checked it out. They fluoresce like crazy. How pretty is this? This was a yard sale find. I even remember the house. I can picture the house I got it in. That one is definitely one of my favorites. Part of the way you can tell these are celluloid is because they are so light, like feathers. Very, very light. I love that one. Here's some of my Moon Glow Lucite. Is it actually Lucite? Well, we don't know, but that is what it's called. Like I said, misnomer in certain instances for sure, but an acceptable one, I would say. I love these colors. Let's see, how many do I have here? This says $45, but I, I did not pay that for it. Hold on, let me just back it up a little bit. And that is so beautiful. Look at the typical 1950s finding here, Japan. Yeah, how pretty. And this one has the graduated beads. What is happening here? Oh, uh-oh, let me fix that. 
Okay. Oh, wow. Those are so beautiful. I could just look at them for a long, long time. I have a lot of pink ones. I didn't even realize I had so many of these. I do sell them uh, when I get them, but these must have been my favorite, <laughs> my favorites. Oh, I love these. How girly, right? And this one's beautiful. I love the blue. And it's on a chain instead of a string. So that's a little bit, a little bit more high quality, you know, high, high class. <laughs> and oh, these are so pretty. These are really baby pink. Isn't that nice? Here's a nice lemony yellow one. Very pretty. This probably says Japan or something. Nope, nothing. And, oh, this is nice. Look at this little Demi. So we have this sort of memory wire bracelet. Oh, look at that, like the clear Lucite um, thing. I was probably supposed to have one on this side too. Oh, it does, okay. There's the bracelet. What a great raspberry color, right? Why do I have, I have black chihuahuas and it gets everywhere and they don't even shed. I don't know what's going on <laughs> today. Um, and this really pretty necklace with the graduated beads. Isn't that nice? Here's another baby pink. Very pretty. And then I have this set too. So let's take this out. I think this is a brooch and earrings as I recall. Let's have a look. Oh, it's three things. I love this set. Wow. That is such a great, real, real yellow, a real lemony yellow without orange tones. And here's the matching earrings. Those need to be cleaned up a little bit. And oh, what? Okay. Hey, these look like bananas, right? Knock, knock. <laughs> um, hmm. So I guess this goes with the, yeah, this looks more like that goes with that than this goes with that. Um, yeah, I don't know how you could tell, but there is like a slight difference here. All right, I guess I just put them all together, but I'll keep them in that baggie, but I don't think these all belong together. I think it's just this and this. I love that though. I love the design of this. It's kind of very abstract. I love it. That's one of my favorites for sure. I just realized that last segment I forgot to plug my microphone in, so hopefully the sound isn't too bad on that section. Sorry about that. Uh, I just found some more bangles. So, oops, this one is pretty. It's missing a lot of stones, though. This looks like a Weiss that I have sold in the past. I don't think it is, though. Really pretty Lucite bangle, though. And this one's not old, but... um. I don't know. I kind of like it. It's probably from the 90s or something. It has glitter in it and uh, artwork on it. I think that one's kind of interesting. This one I really love. This one is so bold. It's really heavy, really thick, really wide. I love this design. Very cool abstract design. That's cool. Oh, I have another Bakelite one too right here. Look at that thing. Isn't that awesome? Oh, that's interesting. Look, there was like a mistake in the factory right there. Somebody wants to put the hole in the wrong spot. I love this cutout design. I love this color. That is a great one. Love that one. Here's just a pretty little red one. When I see these plastics and they're super cheap, I buy them just in case they are Bakelite, but I also just like them in any event. I like to wear them. I think they're cool. This one I was really hoping was Bakelite. I don't think, I think I tested this one. Wait a minute, now I'm not sure. Let's just test it real, real fast because it just takes a second. And do the inside. Hopefully it's not dirty in here. Just put a little, a little smidge here. And let's see what we see here. I'm not really doing this so great, but. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess this one is Bakelite. That's a spinach Bakelite. I, um, I, yeah, I had a feeling it was. Um, yeah, okay, good. I also have these. Now, I believe these are tortoise shell. 
I'm not sure. Um, I think if you run this under very, very hot tap water, it will smell like hair, like burning hair. So I'm not sure. I should check these out. I mean, I can't sell them in any events because it's an endangered thing. Just like I can't sell that ivory one either. That's At least I think these are tortoise shell. Here's a very, very beautiful celluloid brooch. I think it's so unusual and interesting that it has these dangling flowers. And look how they did it with just kind of crappy um, thread. It looks like, yeah, it's like the cherries. It had that stuff that has kind of uh, broken away with, with age. Um, but let's just take a look at w how Webster's defines celluloid. Celluloid is a tough, flammable thermoplastic composed essentially of cellulose nitrate and camphor. Celluloid came about in the 1840s. I think it was originally going to be a substitute for billiard balls, which were made of ivory in those days, which was expensive. But in the late 1800s, it started to see a more widespread use. It's very flammable and it's also breakable. It's fragile. Over time, these things get really brittle and they break. So it's really cool that this piece is not broken yet. <laughs> give me, give me a minute. I'm working on it. I'll probably do it. Check these out. Whoa. I got these at a yard sale. I did pay up for them. I think I paid 15 or $20 for the set because yeah, the guy knew they were super cool. So collectors call these jelly bellies, but technically they are not jelly bellies. A jelly belly should have a clear lucite. And just as a, an added note, I think Lucite was developed in the late 30s. So that couldn't be, I mean, these aren't jelly bellies anyway, so that's neither here nor there. But when you see a jelly belly, just realize that it can't be older than the late 30s, 38 or 39 or something like that. But I love critter jewelry. I love bug jewelry. I love these spiders. Really super, super cool. I forgot I had this item. This must be Bakelite. I mean, just based on that color alone, plus it's a cigarette holder, so it would make sense that they'd make it out of Bakelite. But let's give it a quick test. I don't know why this wasn't with my other Bakelite stuff. If it is Bakelite, it should be. So let's give it a quick test. Very easy to do. Very, very easy to test. So we might as well. Yeah, there's the yellow. Sometimes with yellow pieces, you can get a false positive, I've noticed, but I believe this cigarette holder is Bakelite. That's very cool. Look, you can see somebody's <laughs> teeth marks down there. Very Sunset Boulevard, right? This piece is Bakelite, but this was made modern day. I think he's adorable. Look, it's a dog surfing, because of course it is. This artist's name is G. Paul. I think he lives in Florida. I think you can look him up. His stuff isn't that cheap, but I think my mom bought me this for my birthday or something like that a couple of years ago. And I love this. I think it's super, super cool. By the way, if you're a Leah Stein person, I did a whole video on a haul of Leah Stein because those are plastics too, obviously. So you can check that out if you want. It's just a suggestion. Anyhow, let's continue. Look at this pretty summer necklace. Isn't this nice? This one is probably from the 1960s. Oh, I love this. I left the price on. Sometimes I do that just so I can remember. It was $3.99. Is this the savers tag or the goodwill tag? I'm not sure. Uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, this one's probably late 60s, maybe early 70s. I actually love this. Isn't that feminine and beautiful? I love the colors. I love pink and green together and with this white. That's beautiful, beautiful necklace. Here's some glitter lucite. I love these earrings. These are really cool too. Very groovy, right? I love this little plastic brooch too. I don't know what kind of plastic this is. It's sort of um, very, uh, like brittle. What does that say? G E S dot G E S O N. I've never noticed that before. 126. Hmm. 
I don't know. But I think this is very lovely, and I'm so happy it's not chipped or anything, because this does really feel very breakable to me. I just love the flowers. They're so big. It's like sort of oversized for the stems and what that leaf is. I think that one's really lovely. Here's some awesome glitter lucite. I love these earrings. Aren't these cool? These are very 60s. Really great big button earrings. I love those. Some people call these confetti lucite too. Uh, but I guess, yeah, maybe this is more more glitter, right? Those are big, those big thick pieces of glitter inside there. Love those. They're groovy in any event, no matter what you want to call them. I love this necklace. There's something kind of almost regal about it. It really looks very deco. This is not Bakelite. It does look like butterscotch Bakelite, doesn't it? But it's not. It is just some sort of plastic. I think this is really a cool piece. And I think I got this from a jewelry store haul, or I bought a bunch of jewelry, like five or 600 pieces from a jewelry store that um, wasn't in business anymore. I think that's where I got this. And I think this one's really, really stunning. Isn't that different? I really like that one a lot. I love this color too. It's very neutral. It would go with any outfit. I have another necklace here, so I'll keep my neck there. Who knows if this is the original box or not? I don't. But I really do love this necklace a lot. So this is a designer. Her name is Alice Cavaness. Oh boy, why is that going out of focus that badly? Let me see if I can fix it. Oops, <laughs> there you go. Okay, Alice Cavaness right there. I think this is new. I don't think it's been used. And it also has its hang tag, which is always such a nice thing to, to get. This definitely was from that jewelry store. It was $10 in the day. It was probably like a, a lot of money back then. But let me just put this on my neck real quick. I can figure out how it goes here. So Alice Cavaness was apparently some sort of a little powerhouse. And she married a guy who was in the lampshade business, I think. And they um, teamed up and ran this jewelry company. And apparently they had a, a really cool marriage and they were a very happy dynamic couple that people always spoke very highly of. They have long uh, gone out of business, I think. Okay, here it is. Look at that. Oh, that is so nice. Look at the daisies. I love these colors. Now this is very 1960s, I would think, right? So nicely constructed. I love this. So these beads are plastic. Uh, these are rhinestones, those are not plastic. And these bits are metal. I'm sure you can tell that, that white metal stuff. Don't you love this? Now this might be from the early 70s. I don't know, when did, um, when did her company end? Or their company end? I don't know. But even look at this, you know, nice little details like this. You see that in better pieces, right? They don't need to have that little decoration in the back, yet they do. I love this. I love the baby blue color. I think that's really outstanding. I feel like this looks so dirty. It, it kind of doesn't in person, but the camera's really picking it up and I would bleach it right now but I don't know about mixing that with the Simichrome polish. This is very, very strong. It smells really strong. Whatever kind of chemicals, uh, ammonium. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm not gonna use any bleach. So sorry if that's bugging you. It's definitely bugging me how dirty this is. Now, I love this item too. This is celluloid, very, very light, and it's missing its, its clasps here. Um, I actually have a, a lot of very, very old clasps, so I think I can put something age appropriate on this. But isn't this nice? I love this color red. This is a real cherry red. I think this is very interesting. This one kind of looks like it's from the 1920s to my eyes. Could be wrong, don't know for sure, but I certainly do love it. This one's really cool, very, very light. Lots of movement, like it. This necklace is from a recent haul video. I got this at an antiques kind of place. It, it wasn't that cheap, 
but I love it. I'm going to put it on my neck in a second. And one of my viewers said they have the identical one in pink. And she thought it was from the 70s, I think, or, or the 80s. So yeah, you can tell it's like not super, super old, but I think it's super, super pretty. Let me put it on my neck. I don't know why I love this so much. I just do. I think it's so well done. It's beautiful, right? I have been threatening to wear it, <laughs> but I haven't yet. I'm going to wait till the summer, I guess. This is going to look just right with something. I love that one. So that's it for part one of my plastic jewelry collection. I do have lots more plastic jewelry, so please come back for part two. I'm going to try to get to that as soon as I get a chance. As always, thanks a million for coming, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment below, and I will see you soon, okay? Bye-bye.